Today I'm going to tell you about a four week work integrated learning that I have just completed in a Tasmanian high school. I worked with two year nine students who outlined a desire to increase their vertical jump. For the sake of this video, I'll refer to the two students as student number one and student number two. Student number one has a background in basketball and Australian rules football. Student two plays touch football. Both students stated, and I quote, we want to make our vertical jumps higher while learning different types of drills. Post meeting the two students, I established that I would create a four week jump program designed to progressively overload each week based on the exercises that required little to no equipment. And this is a overview of those activities. Here is the first three weeks of activities with the fourth week being a summary, post-test and feedback lesson. The progressive overload included increasing in duration, weight or difficulty of an activity each week. For example, in week one, skipping was 1.5 minutes on and 30 seconds off and repeated that four times, whereas in week two, it was two minutes on, 30 seconds off, repeating four times and so on. As you can see on the screen here, provide and apply feedback to develop and refine specialised movement skills in a range of challenging movement situations and develop, implement and evaluate movement concepts and strategies for successful outcomes with and without equipment are the curriculum links for this given series of lessons. The limited use of equipment is so that students can do one to two sessions per week in their own time. As according to a study by Otto, Colburn, Jared and Brown in 2012, one session every four weeks is likely to show no results. This study also showcases that progressive overload by increasing volume and emphasising the speed of movement is important in increasing power, speed and muscular strength. This was the scholarly literature that informed my program. As a result of this research, for the four week program my students and I created some new goals. Number one was to learn an array of exercises that will increase our vertical jump. Number two was to learn about more specific muscle groups involved in some of the associated anatomy and physiology, i.e. progressive overloading and DOMS. And goal number three was to learn the correct technique of exercises. We set these goals so that students had the tools to continue this program after the wheel had finished to ultimately increase their vertical jump long term. My pedagogical approach was a mix of experiential learning cooperative learning and assessment and evaluation of students learning as I wanted students to learn through experience and work together. Working one-on-one -on -one allowed me to give constant and direct feedback throughout. Feedback in this wheel was delivered in both a formative and summative manner. My feedback was constructive and I also allowed opportunities for students to self-feedback. I chose to give feedback in this manner as according to a study by Silverman, Tyson and Krampitz in 1992 these feedback methods showed the best results in terms of student learning and understanding when working in small groups. My feedback was dominantly given verbally. For example, I gave direct feedback through exercises to improve technique, while then post-exercise I discussed why it was important to do so, then following into a discussion about specific muscle groups that were used. Assessment methods in this program included a skills slash technique checklist each week as well as external feedback from knowledge of results from measuring their vertical jump. My skills checklist was assessed in the format of teacher observation where I assessed four criteria from each exercise. I assessed the technique, consistency of movement, rhythm and also the students understanding of the muscle groups and I assessed that through use of questioning. Assessing these factors fits into the Year 9 and 10 achievement standards of the Australian curriculum, particularly the aspect that they apply and transfer movement concepts and strategies to new challenging environments and situations. They apply criteria to make judgment and refine their own and other specialised movement skills and movement performances. My feedback also matches the curriculum's implications for teaching, assessing and reporting needs where it states that ongoing formative assessment within classrooms for the purpose of monitoring learning and providing feedback for teachers to inform their teaching and students to inform their learning. By showing students their scores, providing ways to improve, demonstrating correct technique and answering questions and motivating students to stay focused, both students one and two progressively improved each week in the areas of all the assessment. 
I believe through the above factors, I have helped students achieve their goals and therefore achieve the aims of the Australian curriculum. Okay, so now on to how I receive beneficial feedback to inform my teaching from the students. To do this, I asked for two lots of verbal feedback in both weeks one and week three, and two written forms of feedback in week two and four. I asked for verbal feedback in week one as it seemed too early for them to write feedback after only one session. And then again in week three, so students had a chance to learn any last pieces of information before the end of our lessons. This feedback was guided by me through a series of questions such as, are there any areas of content you are not understanding? Or, do you like the manner I'm delivering these lessons? What do you like and what are you not enjoying so much? Or lastly, are there things you wish to learn more about? And so on. Week two, I had a series of questions for my students to answer as seen on the screen below. As you can see, it was difficult to get much useful or insightful information from the students. However, the main points that I took away from this feedback was that they were enjoying my sessions and the way I communicated to them. It was also clear that they were becoming familiar with some of the terminology that I was using in my lessons. Both students identified the desire to learn how to increase strength without getting too bulky. This positively reinformed my communication and content this far while identifying that I need to explain more as to why my chosen exercises will allow for this increase in power and muscular strength slash endurance without getting too bulky. The following weeks, my explanation was more based around why cardiovascular based exercises didn't isolate only one muscle group and therefore toned the body rather than getting too bulky. Week four, I changed my approach slightly by requesting feedback through a survey. I did this so I could put some more ideas in the mind of my students by, while guiding them towards the kind of feedback I was after and therefore hopefully getting some more direct feedback to inform my teaching going forward. Both students gave me four or five out of five across the board, which symbolised that both students learned ways to increase their vertical jump, they liked my communication and they also liked my knowledge of the subject and overall enjoyed the program and the learning. Through the provided feedback from both myself and the students towards my teaching, through my assessment and my communication as seen throughout this presentation and in accordance with the Australian curriculum, I believe my students have achieved their goals as stated at the beginning of the program. Finally, to incorporate ICT into my program and to benefit the understanding and learning of my students, I sent technique-based videos of associated activities to the students so that they could see other examples of the correct techniques. This was to reinforce what they had learned or to back up their knowledge should they forget. Links to these videos were provided to the students as seen on the screen now. The final results showed that throughout this four-week program, Student 1 had increased their vertical jump by almost 4 centimetres and Student 2 had increased theirs by 3 centimetres. This is a result of increased training as well as learning about correct techniques of how to be explosive. Thank you.